Ladies and gentlemen, you've seen him on Wildin' Out on MTV. Ladies and gentlemen, Billy Sora! What's up? What's up? How y'all feeling? Y'all feeling all right? What's up, Dallas? What's going down? We are up in here. Y'all already been smoking and drinking. I can tell right now. I can see by the look on your goddamn face. These goddamn Dallas Cowboy fans is hurt in this bitch right now. I can see this shit. It is tight right now. You fucked up, huh, dog? It's some bullshit right there, man. That is some bullshit. No goddamn well they should have hit that boy like that. That's why I had to come down here. Dallas, y'all got the best goddamn fans. Y'all, well, let me tell you something. You can't stop a goddamn Dallas Cowboy fan. Look at that. Look at that. Delusions of grandeur every fucking year. Let me tell you how crazy. It's three levels of crazy. There's Heaven's Gate cult people. There's uh, the people that David Koresh had fucked up. And it's Dallas Cowboy fans. Y'all will not give up. They get the same talk every year. Hey, dog, let me just tell you like this, bro. Hey, this, this, let me tell you something. I seen it. I seen Jimmy Johnson. He knew what he told me? This our year. This is our year right here. The comeback is happening now. Who the fuck gonna stop Dak Prescott? Who the fuck gonna stop him? They have all the stats and shit. Let me tell you something. Word on the street is they just put some goddamn creatine in the goddamn Gatorade over there. You ain't hear it from me. They got steroids going all in there. You know they juicing. They juicing. They doing what they got to do. God damn it. This is our year. This is our year. This is our year. You get about three games into the season. This is a nigga's heart start breaking. You be 0 and 4. That's all right. Don't even worry about it. Some bullshit out there. Them goddamn refs, man. Let me tell you something. Fuck them goddamn refs. You hear me? Them goddamn refs is paid off. They are trying to stop us from getting to where we got to fucking go. <laughs> You don't start seeing them. It start dwindling off. You know what I'm saying? Game seven, game eight. It's like, you know what? They start being, oh, man, fuck that goddamn shoe. This shit don't hit their ass until they at the house, and that's when the Super Bowl played. It's like, you know what? It's going to be all right. <laughs> Boy, dog hurt, man. Shit. Dak Prescott, they already talking about him. Somebody already saying, don't even worry about that shit. Fuck that ankle. That ankle ain't shit. We going to get him. He going to come back like the Terminator on these motherfuckers. I'm like, shit, it's tough. It's tough to be with that. I, uh, man, shit, sports dog in Texas, it's a big thing, bro. It's a big fucking thing. High school football is huge out here. You got your high school teams. What are people who went to Kimball out of here? Kimball people? Hey, yeah. They don't get that. That's a gang right there. Anybody? <laughs> Carter and Kimball will get your ass beat the fuck up. They still shooting and jumping niggas. You are 40 years old, sir. Take that goddamn letterman off. Take that goddamn letterman off. That shit don't even fit on you no more. Nigga just showing up at the game. <laughs> Sitting in the stands. But this all year right here. Nigga go home. This ain't your homecoming. This is for kids that are 17. You are 42, sir. You are fucking this up. You smell like weaver and dis, uh, divorce in this motherfucker. You kids don't even know what divorce is about. You done fucked your life up three times. Keep coming back to the goddamn school. Get the fuck from this goddamn campus, sir. <laughs> Carter, if you ain't heard about Carter, boy, them, hey, you, hey, let me tell you something. You either do two things, Carter, good. You know how to rob or shoot jumpers at that motherfucker. This, you get a degree in both of them. They ain't playing. Them niggas was, they, they almost like Willow Ridge High School in Missouri City. They, these dudes is awesome because this is when you go to another level of sports athleticism. The, you went there? You know, the, you know the niggas you was part of the robbery, too? <laughs> Wait, you one of the niggas that robbed the place? Uh, so let me tell you people, because this taping is going everywhere else. Because here in Dallas, this is some shit you got to know. It's shit about, you know, you heard about JFK getting his ass popped out here. But you ain't heard about the Carter. Oh, shit. These niggas did robberies, robbing banks, robbing people. Then played the game and still won. I was like, this is awesome. They had that little bullshit movie, but they needed to get them more. They needed to get that budget pumped up. Hey, they robbing people. That's just, that is awesome. Only in Dallas, Texas. It's some shit that only happens in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas is the only place where a dude will have a fade in the front and a shag in the back. And like nothing wrong, bro. They, hey, bro, what's up, bro? God damn, bro. Because let me tell you what you don't know about Dallas dudes, bro. Don't let them niggas start dancing. 
Because when they get to dancing, somebody going to get beat the fuck up. When a nigga get to doing this shit right here, you don't even know it. You don't know, all these niggas, they grooving here. They go, oh, oh, they jumping, they jumping. They say, like, shit, nigga. Who? I thought we was grooving. These niggas doing this. It's always this nigga right here. He lining up. He like, uh-huh. Let's jump your ass out of here. <laughs> If this nigga, <laughs> you gotta watch him. They, they be setting you up, especially at the county fair. With the fair, oh, it's the dude that don't know he finna get his ass whooped. He be out there walking with his girl and shit. They like, hey, let me holler at him right quick, man. Going on with that shit. And this nigga right here, <laughs> Boop, he out of there. <laughs> he is out of there. I got my goddamn preacher suit on today. Yes, amen and amen again, amen. Another thing about being in Dallas, you got some churches out here. We want to welcome you to the Potter's house. Amen. Women that are loosed. TD, it's home, bruh. This is it. Shit, I mean, I'm from Houston. Uh oh, she says this. See? Cocaine is still popping in Dallas. It never stopped. <laughs> Let me tell you something. If you have not seen Michael Irvin, that is the cocaine Superman. You gotta play the goddamn game. I said, oh yeah. Oh yeah, he powdered up. <laughs> Another Dallas Cowboy. C.D. Lamb, he's the receiver. <laughs> if you don't know him, you need to get to know him because he made headlines when he first came out. So if you go back to the draft, and they were telling people who was going to pick for people don't follow sports. C.D. Lamb was a receiver he played. And he's sitting there on camera. You know, the camera's on him. And they're talking. And now the Dallas Cowboys select C.D. Lamb. And so that's the moment where he got his suit on, his mama there, uncle family, his girl next to him. But what's crazy is, in this moment, his girl has decided to take his cell phone out of his hand. And he did not give a fuck about the NFL. He was like, this bitch can't get what's in my phone. He's like, uh-uh, bitch, uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, no, the fuck you not. You been in the room my goddamn day. Oh, uh, fuck this. Uh, hold on, Karen, nigga. Give my goddamn phone, bitch. <laughs> Go on, get the phone, bitch. <laughs> he got that phone right back. He didn't give a fuck. That shit was awesome. We, I knew his hand speed was good then. He looked at all the cameras, looked away, and grabbed that phone back. And went off. I was like, oh, yeah. He gonna do well in the league, he focused. And they gave him the number 88. That was Michael Irvin jersey. You know, that number 88 is something special. It come with a cocaine, a uh, gram of cocaine in the jersey and a domestic violence charge, automatic. You know he finna party. Michael Irvin showed up. Now listen now, game day, game day. What you gonna do, go on, come on now. You gotta wear the number right, dude. <laughs> Michael Irvin is the Bobby Brown of professional football. <laughs> ah, shit. He party, he's still out here. You know the nigga's still on powder because his head getting bigger, but his body still the same size. <laughs> I was laughing. I was like, man, Michael Irvin's still out here. You know they told me this is an urban legend. But somebody told me, I'm not gonna say no names, so I don't want to put nobody out there. But word on the street is Michael Irvin missed all of the 93 practices. He just did cocaine. He lift no weights. He just showed up and just like, hey, I'm ready to play. You ready to play? <laughs> nigga was not dropping no passes. And he just holding his hands up like this. Any nigga walk around like this all day? I said, yeah, he full of drugs. He got the theme music going on. Yeah. Dallas, Texas. Only place in the summertime you can find a nigga wearing leather shorts. I'm just letting the world know. Y'all going worldwide. I'm taking, I'm taking my special here with y'all. I got to let them know what the fuck is up. Somebody got some leather shorts in their car. They just copped it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, bro. Hey, bro, I just got my leather shorts out. We got to kill these hoes for the winter time. He got his shed popping. Open face gold. Ha <laughs> 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 oh, shit. Hitting close to home, huh? I know that nigga he talking about. He talking about Latino. <laughs> Let me tell you, Dallas is tight. I love y'all. Y'all got some illegitimate cousins right down the street. Fort Worth, Texas. Let me tell you something. I don't know what they put in the water down there. 
them motherfuckers is a different breed too. Like y'all, y'all raw. You know Oak Cliff. You know it's like a hog. You know he got some Grand Prairie niggas. They cool, but then Fort Worth niggas. That's I don't know what they doing down there. They whole city be just doing this shit. No shirt on. And this the police. Hey man, you walking on the wrong side of the street. <laughs> hey bro, hey bro, put the gun down. No, you put the gun down. <laughs> they boogieing on your goddamn ass. Oh shit. I had to fucking come here, man. I had to fucking come here. So much shit happening in the world, bro. Uh, we survived COVID. Uh, obviously, uh, Dallas, y'all stopped giving a fuck a long time ago. The mask ordinance stopped here. It was Dallas motherfuckers first. Hey, man, hey, I'm not wearing a goddamn mask. It's our fucking year. The Cowboys going to be number one. I was like, this, that was that. Niggas took their mask off. Said, Hell yeah. <laughs> y'all still kissing in the mouth, sharing hookah down here. What's the little place that got the pool tables in it? They got all the pool tables in there. The little sports bar that everybody go to. They got the good win. What's it called? No, no. <laughs> Nigga talking about Dave and Busters. Nigga, no. You know you niggas ain't had no goddamn Dave and Busters like that. <sighs> you over there with the white girl acting brand new and shit. How you mean Dave and Busters, my nigga? No, nigga. What's the, what's the spot called, man? It's a spot over here. Right. Click. Yeah. Oh, there it is. Click. Let me tell you something. It's a pool hall. Y'all keep them shits. You go your ass in there. It's, it's one way in, one way out that bitch. Yeah, I ain't playing. I love it, man. I, I, I see so much shit happening. Because Dallas is the centerpiece of a lot of things people don't know. When, when stuff comes in, in the fashion department, they sit in here. You guys had some of the biggest and had some of the biggest fashion scene that people haven't found out about. It was a midway point between Los Angeles and New York. So culture definitely for Texas we followed what was big in Dallas. We tried to emulate and get big in Houston and other places. So you guys were on the forefront of that. You had stuff happen like, of course, I talked about it and it's going full detail. JFK got assassinated here. People know that. Some people don't. But, uh, you know, lately, it's definitely time to send old Trump to a trip to Dallas. It was just <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're going to get him to come on down here and get this shit over with. Look at the Trump supporters saying, hey, that's not nice. <laughs> Think I give a fuck what's nice? We got to get his ass the fuck up out of here. You know he ain't getting no pussy. He ain't getting no pussy. Trump ain't getting no pussy. Daddy ain't paid for, I'm saying. <laughs> he doing a lot of jacking off these days. Now he got COVID. Yeah, well, my dick, I'm just going to keep. He just doing what the fuck he want to do. You know, the debates was crazy. I'm going to let you talk, but I don't want to. I'm going to keep talking. Who's this? <laughs> Sleepy Joe, you know what, Sleepy Joe? You just need to fall back. You're slow. Your son's a crackhead. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I'm yelling at the TV. Whoop his ass, Joe. <laughs> Slap the fuck out this shit. <laughs> he can't hear me. He can't hear me because he fucking sleep. Wake the fuck up. <laughs> he right. You sleepy, motherfucker. He's Call your son a fucking crackhead and you ain't do shit about it. You can't call no black man's son a crackhead and think you gonna get away. You can get on TV in front of people? You would've did better doing it with nobody around, not with these cameras on. You could've did that. <laughs> I wish you would've thought you was gonna tell Barack his daughter was a crackhead on TV. He said, hey, wait a minute, what did you say? Uh, let me get this straight. I mean, there's a lot of stuff you can say. But you're not going to talk about Sasha Malia and say they're crackheads. I will beat your motherfucking ass. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> I know who would have fixed that debate because they didn't have a good moderator. They didn't have somebody to take fucking control. You know who they needed to moderate that? They kept talking about all these journalists. Fuck no. Only one person could have ran that goddamn moderation the way it needed to. Could have ran that debate the way it needed to. And his name is Denzel Washington. Also, Mr. President, you gonna sit up here and call his son a crackhead on national TV, huh? Hmm? Oh, my nigga. I'm gonna tell you what. You're gonna calm your ass the fuck down is what you gonna do. huh? He's talking. You shut your goddamn mouth. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Ted Koppel ain't got nothing on me. 
Now he's talking to him. He's talking to you. You talking over him. He called you Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe Trump's talking to you. What's going to fuck on here? Somebody's got to step up, hold their balls, and take control of the goddamn country. Huh? Do I got to get in this? Because I don't want to get in this. I'm an actor. I play shit on TV. I want you to step up and do what the fuck you got to do. Huh? Now there's some rules here. While he's talking, you shut the fuck up. While he's talking, you shut the fuck up. Everybody touch gloves and come out talking. Huh? Niggas be tuned in. Hell yeah. Say this shit again, Denzel. They keep talking about who gonna replace Black Panther. Denzel need to play Black Panther. Welcome to Wakanda. You niggas, let me tell you something. Iron Man ain't got nothing on me. I'm like, he be hanging all out his suit and shit. <laughs> this shit crazy, dog. I'm on every morning with you guys here in Dallas on the Morning Hustle Show, and y'all are some of the best fucking people to wake up with every day. Y'all call in, y'all keep me rolling, so shouts out to y'all who listen. And I start getting calls. People start reaching out. Start, you know, start more. White people start coming to my shows. I start feeling like, okay, y'all coming out. They get, it's some white, it's some, oh no, white people listen in the morning. It's funny. You think they do. They do. They call, they come in. They start coming to the show, start commenting on Instagram. They on my Facebook page. And I keep an open dialogue a lot of times. Because I feel like in this moment, we just have to make shit clear. That's a lot of commentary. My last stand-up special, I talked clearly about police brutality. And I came up with a one in 1,000 rule where I alliterated that in order to stop police brutality, I had a, a solution for it. For every one black man that was killed by police, we kill 1,000 puppies. Special started going viral. <laughs> White folks was losing that. You're gonna fucking kill puppies, you son of a bitch! It was, it was nuts. It was nuts, they was lost. I was like, you more worried about these puppies than, than black people? They part of the problem. Well, man, I want to understand what you're saying. What the fuck, man? You know, you saying that type of shit, go the fuck back where you came from. <laughs> when you say that shit, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I don't mind going back. Give us our motherfucking check, bitch. Give us our check. Because we work for 400 years, ain't get paid for a goddamn thing. I tell you, you want black people to leave the fuck out of this country, pay us all our money. We'll leave. We'll tear the fuck out of Cancun. We will put up on a boat, and it'll be like the Tom Joyner cruise. <laughs> doom, doom, doom. Ding, ding, ding. Whoa, whoa. See that? Look at that. And niggas have taken over Cancun. <laughs> Cancun be the next spot. It's popping. Fuck Wakanda. Cancun will be it. We don't give a fuck. We ain't going far on the boat. We'll go somewhere. We'll get right the fuck off there. I talked about reparations on my last special, At Risk, and people was talking about that. And I was just like, hey, man, let me help you understand something. People fail to realize that... In these protests, in these trying times, why black faces are so important. Black people, we've gotten mad at people who support Donald Trump, and let me explain something to you. Both sides, both parties need black faces. Do you know why? Because we validate suffrage. There's not a skin tone, there's not a face that has been more oppressed in this world than black people. And if you disagree with me, hopefully some of you are spades players. In the game of spades, there's only two things that can shut shit down. There's Big Joker and Little Joker. Now, you got the Jewish people who went through something. They had the Holocaust. I get them that. That was Little Joker. But when it comes to world crimes, slavery's Big Joker, bitch. And we hold it high. People say this shit all the time. They was like, hey, man, you know, I'm white. And if, if, if things were happening back then, I, I wouldn't have participated in slavery. I wouldn't have been a part of Shut the fuck up, bitch. Yes, you would have. You ain't got a lot of kicking. It's cool. Slavery was a fucking hit. Shit was a fucking hit. It was a worldwide success. Shit went on for 400 years. You know how long that is for some shit to be popping? They was selling the shit out of niggas. The only thing that hit the global market that big, that fast was iPhones. Niggas was the first iPhones. I'm going to say it right now. Think about it. What you use your iPhone for? You use iPhones to communicate. Listen to music, make money, and sometimes do some kinky, weird, nasty sexual shit. That's what they use niggas for. First text message came like this. Hey, nigga, go in there and tell Ma to bring me a plate of food for dinner. I'm hungry. And the nigga went in there and did the shit right there on the plantation. That was the first message being passed. Music? You don't think it was a nigga singing? Hey, nigga, sing me a song before I fall asleep here. Shit was happening. It was like, I got to get me one of those new niggas. I gotta get them. These niggas are incredible. I need one. 
where can I get one of these niggas at? I'll get a whole field of them. Look how they sell phones. Look how y'all treat y'all phone. Y'all throw your phone down. You beat the fuck out of a slave. That's what you would've did. Some of y'all don't charge your phones. You would've done niggas the same way. Yeah. It's to get tough people like, we don't want to feel like that, but damn shit. We'd be like, hey, I'm, hey, it's done now. That's what I'm feeling like. If you feel bad, give us a goddamn check. I've been asking for that same check. I'm going to keep saying it. I'm probably not going to get it. That's why I steal shit every time I go to the self-checkout. I get my reparations every day, bitch. And I'm going to keep saying it on every special until you do it. And I now implore white people to do it. Still use the reparations, bang. Throw that shit, go right over the scanner and just say, slavery, and see how good that shit feel. I implore Mexican people to do it. Go ahead and throw it over and say, slavery. Because <laughs> they oppress y'all too, holding y'all up at the border. Gay people, you feel like they're right saying that? And say, slavery, it, this shit feels good. I steal all type of shit. T-shirts, pants, meat. I ain't pay for that shit in years. <laughs> I ain't paying for that. I'm telling you niggas now, stop trying to go through. You know them Dallas niggas. They gonna try to take a, a 72-inch through the goddamn site. I, wasn't no black people making no 72 inches back then, so don't steal that. <laughs> steal a little, a little bit at a time. Nobody gonna feel it. <laughs> I ain't saying all niggas steal, but we all definitely steal when we don't get our goddamn money. I'm going to tell you something. I live in Houston. We got two big ass airports, IAH and Hobby. My, my cousin, he worked on the goddamn tarmac on the runway. They cut his hours one week. He showed up at my house with his pickup truck with two goddamn Delta Airline tires in my goddamn yard. <laughs> he like, hey, cuz, hold these motherfucking tires right here. The whole going to stop playing with my goddamn money. I was like, nigga, this is 60 inch. Uh, 747 tires, nigga, what the? You done took out my whole backyard. What the fuck am I doing with that? If they don't give my check, I'm going to run them hole for all that shit. This nigga had half of a goddamn plane in my backyard. That nigga was stealing a door every day. The planes keep coming up short of doors. This nigga stole half a wing, a turbine. He just stealing shit. Then he just starts stealing luggage. It's like everybody on Houston to Atlanta flight, luggage just gone. We lost your bag. No, you didn't. James got your shit. <laughs> and it's at my house. <laughs> we still. Give a fuck you in corporate America. You at home right now got about four staplers, three hole punches, <laughs> pencils, pens. If you work in the medical industry, you got hella syringes at the house. Goals. <laughs> I got to be the only dude in America that has ever had this right here. I'm the only dude who has ever had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich on Big Mac bread. Nigga, that shit's incredible. <laughs> my homeboy Keith Mama was the manager at my McDonald's, nigga. Oh my God. You have never had a triple decker <sighs> peanut butter and jelly. That shit is fire. <laughs> Just don't, don't worry about it. Think about how soft that Big Mac bread is and think if you put peanut butter and jelly on it. <laughs> nigga, we on the porch in that motherfucker rocking. <laughs> oh, that's fire. I'm from Chattanooga, Tennessee. We make Debbie cakes there. Little Debbie cakes. That's where I was born at before I moved to Houston. They were still in there too. Still in shit. You know what else they make at the, uh, at, the, at the Little Debbie factory? They make the little chocolate pieces that you put on ice cream sandwiches. Oh my God. You ain't lived till you took one of them chocolate sandwich pieces and just dunked it in some milk and ate that? That is, that is white Jesus right there. That's it. Take me to glory. Still be happening. Mexicans be stealing all the time. They be stealing brick by brick. Build them a whole goddamn house. <laughs> Jose, how the fuck you got eight different color bricks on this goddamn mansion you done made? In the middle of nowhere. As a family oriented. I love they ass. What my Latin people at here? Latin people here make some noise. Oh yeah, I know you getting so. I know you getting it popping, boys. They ain't no pullout with the Mexican people. They just no, leave it in, leave it in, leave it. No, 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 leave it, leave it, leave it in, leave it in. Hey, don't you pull out, fucker? You leave it in. I'm Catholic. <laughs> ain't no birth control. Uh. Mexican people, Mexican women are the only people that get double pregnant. The baby inside the baby be pregnant. 
here on National Geographic, we see a new phenomenon where there's a seven-month-old baby pregnant with a three-month-old baby. I was like, this is, how is this happening? It's, it's on the sonogram, man. I love, I love Mexican people, bro. I love the shit out y'all. Hey, I, they be fucking. They definitely fucking. He fucking. She gonna fuck you at least four times before you leave here. It should cool till you get 35 and you realize, I don't got four nuts in me today. What you doing? <laughs> Maria, stop! I'm empty. <laughs> no, leave it in, leave it in. <laughs> You're on baby number 12. <laughs> Gotta work 98 hours this goddamn week. Take care of these goddamn babies. I am a great granddaddy and I'm only 36. <laughs> Shit. I drink this. This message is sponsored by whoever put me this drink. It's funny though, funny bro. I'm a, I'm a product of, of having a great father. Um, I talk a lot about my, if, in my stand-up specials and in, in comedy, I talk about how my father was in my life. And I'm weird because I grew up with my dad, my grandfather, and my great-grandfather. He died till he was 98. It's crazy, right? Great-grandfather. Grandfather died when he was 74, my dad died when he was 58. Me and my dad were best friends. So it was hard with me not having any sons. I did a stand-up special called Last of My Kind because I don't have any brothers and I don't have any sons. And all the guys that I grew up with, uh, they gone. So it's funny as shit when I think about the memories we have. And I love telling people about shit that happens. I know how to kill bees. It's a random thing to say. <laughs> but I was trained since childhood to kill them. My father had some level of, had some level of stigmatism where his eyes, because he got hit in the head with a rock when he was like 10, <laughs> fucked his vision up. And when bees fly, he can't see them. He can't stop them. And he just gets stung all the time. Just, so just imagine you a grown ass man and when bees come out, you scream like a bitch. <laughs> he, ah! Ah! Got these motherfuckers everywhere! His eyes, he can't catch them. He can't. And that's just, that was my daddy's weakness. He can fight. Like, he can hit niggas. Like, you, you can't jump him. He, uh, all type of he can swim, but bees? And he always trying to keep his composure when they're around. I'm seven years old. He coming. Hey man, let me talk to you right quick. All right, now listen, man, put on the long sweet shirt, put your hoodie on. I need you to kill them goddamn yellow jackets out there. They are tearing my ass out the goddamn frame. You kill them little devil sons of bitches out there. I know you're only seven years old, but goddamn it, you're a man today. And this really came after one particular time and I took the job because when I was five, I would never forget this shit. Here's where it is. You are never, you're never not going to be your father's son. And you're never not going to be your grandfather's grandson. My dad, at 30, had the still same responsibility of cutting his grandfather's grass every other Saturday. Now, my daddy grown, he got kids, he got a job, he got a wife, but he better cut that goddamn grass. <laughs> he better cut that goddamn grass. My great-grandfather, I'm over there, we supposed to be going out, we going to the movies, because we wanted to go see the new Batman movie came out, the first one with Michael Keaton and, yeah, yeah, Jack Nicholson, long time ago, some of y'all wasn't even born. <laughs> anyway, it was a phenom, niggas was hype, Prince was on the soundtrack, shit was a success. <laughs> For a while, Prince was supposed to be Batman, but nobody wanted Batman doing all this shit. It was like, they was gonna give it to him. And he came out, I am the Dark Knight. They had a definite LGBTQ. They're like, yes, bitch, kill it. Batman, da na 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 na. <laughs> you know, had a bunch of gay pornos with niggas with Batman outfits with the booty hole cut out. Da na 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 na, Batman. I was like, uh uh. <laughs> I know it's some niggas here laughing at that shit that shit crazy. Da na 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 bad man. There's a gay dude watching this shit talking about what is everybody tripping for? <laughs> Bitch, that shit is hot. <laughs> <laughs> Bad man. <laughs> 
Hey, the band kicked Batman out the goddamn just say, hey man, Batman, get your freaky ass out of here, man. Hey, bro, get your nasty ass out. Hey, get the fuck out of here, Batman, if I beat your ass. Da -na -na -na. <laughs> They definitely can they definitely stopped Prince from doing this shit. So we was hyped to go see it. We went over to tell my great my great grandfather, like, hey, uh, I'm because I helped my daddy cut the grass. And my my great grandfather was hot. He didn't give a fuck. First of all, he dropped out of school when he was in the sixth grade. And he was married by the time he's supposed to be in the eighth grade. I don't know what the fuck they was doing back in the 30s, but this nigga had a job working with the city, scooping up dead dogs. That's what he did. You wonder how dead dogs get scooped up? It was a nigga named my great granddaddy. That's what he did. He rolled around, scooped them up, threw them in the back of the truck. <laughs> Talking about how I didn't give a fuck about dogs. You know how many dead dogs I've seen? I am, nigga, that shit don't do shit to me when I see dead dogs. I'm like, get a nigga, it's a two-bagger. That's what he said. Oh, it's a two-bagger right here. Give me two bags. <laughs> give me two garbage bags. He, <laughs> <laughs> throw them in a the truck. <laughs> throw them in a the truck. That shit was traumatizing. Nigga, my dog died. I had a goddamn cocker spaniel named TJ. We ain't no funeral for TJ. Nigga, my granddaddy and my daddy came over to the house. Scoop him up. <laughs> Hold the bag, nigga. I'm sitting there when the dog wait, hit that bag. They was like, spin it. I was like, ah. <laughs> That's a two-bagger right there. Throw some bleach on him. Throw some bleach on him. He was a good little dog. Let's smoke a cigarette. <sighs> Anybody want to go to Ryan's? Anybody want to go to Golden to Corral? Let's go to a buffet. <laughs> We went to a buffet, nigga. It was traumatizing. Every time I see a bag of trash as I was teeing, I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> was hurt. So let me get back. We supposed to go see Batman. We get over there. My daddy trying to tell my, my great granddaddy. He was like, uh, hey, man, we're going to go see this movie. I'm going to take the kids over here. We're going to be right back. My great granddaddy, he smoked cigars, so his voice is real fucked up. Ah, you motherfuckers. Y'all ain't shit. You little bullshit ass son. Fuck him. You little motherfucker. Fuck you. You and your daddy fucking over my yard. Y'all trying to fuck me. That's what you're doing. Y'all wouldn't be shit without me. I'm the original. You motherfuckers is duplicates. Do you know how they hit me? Y'all are carbon copy, wasters, talent, motherfuckers. Lucky my leg ain't fucked up, I'll kick y'all ass. Get the fuck out of my house, nigga. You too. I don't give a fuck if you five, bitch. You know what I was doing when I was five? I was the milkman, motherfucker. <laughs> like, what? You was the milkman? You would have been the milk boy. You didn't give a fuck. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. No lie. My great granddaddy was a G. There was only two guns that I seen in my house growing up, or I ever saw. And both of them was the same type, 38 snub nose. Now 38 snub, show, snub nose only got six shots in it. It's a revolver, it ain't gonna jam. And what they don't know about it is, usually they beat your ass with the goddamn gun before they shoot your ass with it. See some old school niggas in here, Dallas, that's right, that's right. You pistol whip these niggas first. These niggas out here shooting without pistol whipping. That's the problem now. These niggas out here doing that da na 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 Batman shit. You're supposed to pistol whip these niggas on a robbery. All that da na 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 shit. So my great grandfather reached under his shirt, pulled out the 38 snub. I'm going to shoot one of you niggas. Y'all don't get my goddamn yard together. Y'all make a decision. I, I thought it was some bullshit. But I remember my grandfather telling the story about how his daddy, this same nigga that's tripping, shot through the door because my granddaddy wouldn't let him in because he was drunk. Yeah, he ain't hit him, but shit, nigga, he shot through shots of that six shots out of that 38 snub through the door. So I knew he would shoot a kid. I was like, nigga, I ain't trying to die. So I started trying to get behind shit that could stop the bullet and shit. I'm like, I don't know if they're talking, Daddy, just go cut the grass. I don't want to see Batman no more. I don't want to see him. All the kids got that list I don't want to see Batman no more. I got the boo-boo. I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> My daddy like, all right, son, because he's trying to duck the bullet, too. He don't know where it's coming from. So he out there rushing, trying to cut the grass, and my granddaddy, great-granddaddy smoking a cigar, looking out the window. See, your daddy out there, he trying to fuck me. He rushed me half ass in my yard. I try to tell him, slow down when he go around that bush. There's a yellow jacket in there, but he going to see. He going to see. <laughs> <laughs> my daddy keep rushing around the thing. 
He's like, I said, Dad, you ain't gonna tell him, Greg, Granddad? He's like, uh uh, he gonna sing. He's half asking me, he's trying to fuck me, I'm gonna fuck him. What? He hit the top lock on the door and just looked out the window. Yup, oh, yeah. He got the weed, he, oh, here they go, they on him. My grand, my daddy, he couldn't see the bees, he was, ah! 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 Open the door, ah! My great granddaddy sitting there smoking, he's like, no, go around, you ain't gonna let them motherfuckers in here on me. Go your goddamn ass around. See, he tried to fuck me, trying to see that da, 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 Batman shit. Where Batman at now? Get your bitch ass around the back of the house. So my daddy is still running around in terror. This is a grown man crying, getting his ass towed up by some yellow jackets. Oh, nigga, the shit gets deeper. During this same runaround, my grandfather comes into the driveway, pulls up. My daddy is beating on the window. This his son. He... Hey man, yellow jackets on me. Uh-uh, I ain't letting the window down. Go on to the back door. <laughs> so now he has been let down by two generations of his family. Getting his ass towed the fuck up. My, you thought Martin was bad on that episode when he was swole up? My daddy was in that bitch. Like this. That's how he went to see Batman. Nigga, I'll never forget that shit. So I've been killing bees a long ass time. So the old way you kill bees, you got to get carbureted fluid. Yeah, see, look at something about carbon. See, see, I don't know. Gas or carbureted fluid. Now, carbureted fluid usually have a nice little straw on it where you can sh get down in there and get a little distance. I and then I scatter on their ass. They couldn't get big. <laughs> but thanks to Mexicans, they taught me a way to kill bees right off the bat. Everybody watching, this is how you kill a nest of bees. You get you a bucket or a cup, some hot ass water. You put you a bunch of detergent in there. Dishwashing liquid. You stir it up. Now I learned this because I was working at Dennis. The cooks in there, they all Mexican dudes. They told me, hey, let me tell you something, boy. You want to kill the bees, eh? Mutato? Hey, come here, come here. Come on, come on, come on, I show you how to kill the bees. <laughs> you throw that water. Get that water there. Get it hot. Get it hot. All right. Like, bro, what the fuck is you always doing this? <laughs> <I just, laughs> come on, I want to grab your booty. Come on, eh? Come on, nigga, come on, huh? <laughs> You take the water hot and then throw it on the beach. I was like, that's it? Like, nah, nigga, fuck you. I ain't finna get stung like that. But what happens is the soap hits the bees. The bees can't spring their wings and it suffocates them and they all fall and then you stomp the motherfuckers out. That's it. <laughs> so once I started doing that, I was, I'm, I'm eight years old, 10 years old. I've been killing bees, stomping them out. But now I'm, now I'm 15 killing bees. I, you see me kill them. I'm stomping, fuck you, motherfucker. Stop. Some gangster shit. Got me some pussy too at a family reunion. <laughs> oh wait, now nah, that came out fucked up. Uh, <laughs> hey, listen, listen. What about family reunions? <laughs> hey, motherfucker, I said I was from Tennessee, not backwoods Tennessee. Oh, so y'all Dallas motherfuckers ain't never kissed one of your second cousins before. Y'all know y'all was out there hiding and hunching and running and shit. Then your granny gotta come out there. Hey, you know that's your goddamn cousin now. Y'all undercovers are harder. <laughs> I need the girls on this side, the boys over there. These y'all cousins. <laughs> I'm at a family reunion for one of my own boys. We go over there, and there's a bunch of his girl cousins over there, man. I threw the thing. I'm like, yeah, nigga, yeah, all right. Yeah, all right. All right, go, go to the next door. Yeah, like, no, nigga, you fucked your cousin. I know you fucked your cousin because I fucked my cousin. <laughs> I ain't say nothing, no. I ain't say nothing. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Fuck y'all laughing, y'all ain't <laughs> Y'all ain't shit. All right, hold on, nigga. Let me take a break for a second, nigga. This little suit is tight to the motherfucker. Every time I'm laughing, this shit ain't moving, you know. Normally, when you laugh, the suit do this. This suit like, oh, nigga, stay right there. No, you want to look like a pastor. You can sit your ass up here. Lights is cooking my goddamn ass. I ain't even got no cocaine in my system. I need something now. I'm drying up on the inside. My insides is yelling, help me, help. <laughs> All right, shit, where my phone at? Oh, shit. These niggas. Oh, this, get, bring it up here. Just bring it. Thank you. Thank you. Y'all get, get it from my homegirl Andromeda right there. This production almost didn't happen. Nigga, now he want to point. <laughs> My brother, stand right there. I ain't good to do it again. 
He gonna edit this part out the tape. I don't give a fuck. I'm gonna get you on your ass now. Let's tell you about this motherfucker right here. Found his videos online and shit. You know, I'm trying to find a Dallas film crew. And I'm like, the video's dope to the motherfucker, you know. So I call him, and then as soon as he answers, him, hello, how can I help you, my brother? <laughs> I said, oh, shit, this nigga finna take my identity. <laughs> so <laughs> immediately I'm like, hey, man, this the film crew? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is, it is the film crew. Uh, you what? <laughs> do you want to do the video or not? <laughs> I'm not have time to talk to you today. What do you, do you want it or not? I don't know who you are. You're not DC Young Fly. I don't know who the fuck you are. And I, fuck you, man. I was like, hey, man, now nah, it's me. I'm for real. And you want the video? Okay, right. <laughs> it's Muda Sucker, big time comedian. I never heard of you. You don't even have 100,000 followers, motherfucker. <laughs> And I tell you what, you want a special? See me at $1,000 today. I was like, nigga, this is a scam. <laughs> this nigga made me pay all his money before he showed up. Then, you know, then he gonna call me after I send the money. It's okay, brother. I got the money now. Things are going to be okay. <laughs> we are going to make you into Eddie Murphy. I went to God. <laughs> shoot day come. I'm trying to tell him, like, hey, man, you ready for the shoot? Uh, what's the shoot? Oh, 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 yes, yes. The shoot, the shoot. I just thought he was had his hand over the microphone like, it is the dumbass nigga. Wait, hello? <laughs> I will be there at um, 5.30. <laughs> you should have seen my heart pumping at 5.31. I was looking around, I was like, they done got my ass again. <laughs> he comes scrolling his ass in here without the camera. I'm like, bitch, where the camera at? Fuck that. We want to fight. I'm going to fight you and stab one of these other niggas because they too strong on that goddamn camera. Shit, now I had no cameraman with that type of grip. He grabbing the fuck out that goddamn camera. He followed every time I move, that nigga right here. He, uh. I have to follow him precisely as I measure the hairs on his head. <laughs> we have already stolen his social security number and we are stealing everything from his house because we are watching him right now. <laughs> this is not a film crew, but an operation. <laughs> You better not edit that out, motherfucker. Keep that shit in there. That shit fire. Yeah. All right. Fuck what I talking about. Oh, there it is. I remember. All right. And go. All right. So, look. I just came from Tampa last night. I was watching the news, and in Tampa, Florida, they have a big epidemic going on. Sinkholes are huge in Tampa. Sink holes. Some of y'all never heard of that shit before. Let me educate you for a minute. So, we all know that Florida sits out on the water. It's on the edge. It is surrounded by water on both sides. Because of that, the ground, unlike Texas sediment, is made from limestone. Over time, the limestone erodes away in underwater vacuums. When there's a lot of water, it can erode limestone because you can pour water over limestone and make it erode. So when there's a pipe that bursts and this water flows through it or the underground canals change, a whole pocket of the earth that's under here, the ground that we walk on, just disappears. fucking And you never fucking know when it's going to happen. Now, one man in particular, white guy, was in his house, sleeping in his bed. His brother was in his other room, and out of nowhere at four in the morning, whoosh, fell through the goddamn floor. <laughs> and I'm trying not to laugh, because it's like the anniversary in Tampa of the shit happening. So his brother was all on TV, he was like, hell man, I was in there and I was watching the game. I said, ain't no game on at four o'clock, you was jacking off, nigga. <laughs> Ain't no goddamn game on it four in the morning, nigga. Good luck with that. You was jerking. And all I heard out the other room was, oh, no, no, no. I was like, nigga, that is hilarious. I'm like, if this is a way to go, and they could never find him. He's, his, his, his whole bed just, and it was a 2,000 foot drop down into the ground. Never to be seen again. The sinkhole started spreading. So eventually they had to tear the whole goddamn house down and start trying to fill the hole or just close it off because it's too much sediment or it's too much open space to fill that up with. 
So what's happened is sinkholes have popped up other places, and it's a terroristic thing in the Tampa, uh, Florida area. People are freaking the fuck out. And it got me because I'm like, I know you white. I know it. Because ain't no way no nigga could have fell in no hole and just diss a fucking beard. Especially not with no black girlfriend. Y'all ain't having that shit. Oh, so you telling me what now? So he ain't answer his phone because he fell in a hole. Well, where the fuck the hole at then? Because I'll tell you this, motherfucker, better not be no bitches in a goddamn hole. Oh, you can't go down the hole because the hole's so deep. Bitch, Tasha, lower me down in the hole, bitch. Lower me down, bitch. I'm going down here. I tell you what, better not be no holes in this motherfucking hole. Smell me, if you go down there, you can't get out. That's cool, but it ain't gonna be no holes in this goddamn hole. <laughs> Never to be seen again. You know, you know, don't be just be, bitch, let me down. We gonna see what's in this motherfucking hole. Oh, he just disappeared. Oh, he went in a hole. I'm so scared. Ooh. No, y'all get, y'all don't give a fuck. Right, right, whatever. <laughs> But tell me this, though. So if the hole's so big, why your brother didn't fall in there? Y'all must think I'm fucking crazy, bitch. Lower me down in a goddamn hole. (laughs) (laughs) Nigga! You know who it is. I know my wife would be in the goddamn hole like, yeah, bitch, it's cool. With the kids, we all going down. It's about to be a sad story down in this hole. But it better not be no holes in a goddamn hole. <laughs> That's a shirt. Better not be no holes in the hole. You know that shit would go around for a minute and one nigga think he's slick. He gonna go to the site and lie. He call him, bitch. Yeah, you know, I can't go home. I fell in the hole. <laughs> you stuck in the hole? <laughs> you know how niggas be lying, dog. We be lying. They come in four in the morning. Where the fuck was you at? Man, you ain't gonna believe this shit. <laughs> so I'm walking over there. I'm over there leading the club. I'm walking out of nowhere. I, who, I'm in the goddamn hall. So Terry, he had to throw his goddamn road down, pull me up with the tow truck. I get out, the nigga came out, the nigga tried to rob me. I hit him, I e e e him. You know what I'm saying? And the bitch tried to tell me. Nigga, you know it's bats in that motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> Where the hole at? Cause it better not be no holes in the goddamn hole. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Oh. And here's the shit that got me though. Here's the shit that got me the most. They're starting a petition to take taxpayers' money to go do assessments of neighborhoods to try and make sure. No more sinkholes happen on residential properties. They got a whole team of people and they're trying to raise money, crowdsource to make sure this doesn't happen again. Because the news lady looked into the camera and said these words, and I want you to follow me. She said, because it's the anniversary, it happened, I think in 2013, a couple years, it happened a, a while back. So she says, you know, as American citizens, it is our job to ensure that no human being should die in their sleep, in their bed. What got me was, I was like, damn, that's the way Breonna Taylor got killed. And it wasn't no hoe who did that. And them motherfuckers are still walking around. But I just want y'all to think about that shit. Niggas sitting here, think about Think about that. Who the fuck want to go to sleep and you just wake up dead? Some bullshit. I know my dog right here with the man's laughing because this nigga high. He like, this nigga crazy, dude. You go to sleep and you wake up and you at a Tupac concert. It's just me against the world. <laughs> me against the world. Like, what the fuck? I said, nigga, it's popping. Nigga, what happened? Oh, nigga, you died. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I go back and, no, nigga, it's over. Nigga, we, just, nigga, we finna go see Nip. Nigga, we chilling. <laughs> Nigga woke up dead. I ain't gonna lie, I'd rather wake up dead. I don't even wanna, I don't wanna fade away. I would just go, go to sleep, get some pussy, fall asleep, and then that's it. 
Cause you know, ain't nothing like that post nut sleep you fall into. That's how I want to go. Either by a jack off or by some pussy. It just. I know the nigga fell asleep in some pussy before. <laughs> Married niggas done fell asleep in the pussy a bunch of times. Look at this nigga. Look at this what it is. You look like you don't pull out. <laughs> You like you fuck with all your clothes. She just laying there with the same outfit on. Go ahead, go to sleep. <laughs> Soon as y'all get home tonight, he gonna do. <laughs> He gonna be drinking. He gonna be laying there right with him, sleep on top. He talking about, better not be no hoes in the goddamn home. <laughs> oh, another Texas terminology right there. White people looking around, what does already mean? I didn't know we were ready. I thought we were ready already. But he said already, and I was like, on your mark, set, go, is that the same thing? Kinda. <laughs> Kinda. <laughs> already. Cause you can say already after anything. Girls can say, we're gonna fuck these niggas, we're gonna steal some shit. Hell yeah, already. <laughs> <laughs> Fellas, you come home and your girl surprise you, you watching the watching the game and she just starts sucking your dick on the couch, you look down, you be like, already. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Texas shit right there. All these niggas want a box? Oh, nigga, what's up? Already. <laughs> Three different already's. We know what they are, though. Already got that bitch ass nigga right here. Already. <laughs> Since quarantine been happening, we all have been spending a lot more time on the internet. You watching Amazon Prime, watching Netflix, you watching that. You own there, or you just on Amazon. That's what I'm doing. I'm ordering all type of shit off Amazon. And I want it today. I want it right now. Get that shit over here to the house. I ordered yesterday two compound microscopes. And I wanted them before I left to come to Dallas. The microscopes is the ones we used to look in when we was in science class. I got two of them at the crib, nigga. They $30 right now. They come with slides. I'm, me and my kids spitting in our hand. <sighs> what, look at that, daddy. Look at all that. Amazon, nigga. I'm getting all type of shit. I'm living the life right now. I got a telescope. I got a microscope. We looking at the stars, the neighbors, all type of shit. <laughs> I'm seeing down the street <laughs> doing all type of shit. Me and my boy, man, my boy Red. Hey, Red, what's up, man? Hey, it's my boy Red right there. Hey, man, he... <sighs> we was motorsports, bro. Hey, hey. So I got a 1967 Mercedes, right? We have restore this car all from Amazon. <laughs> Swear to God, am I lying? They're like, hey, if you need your car tuned up, or hooked up. Now, the story about this car is, is that my daddy got this car. He paid off his student loans with his first big job as an assistant principal and football coach. He went and bought this Mercedes from this old white man. The white man was dying of cancer. His son ended up dying in a drunk driving accident. He did not want his wife to sell his car or let his car get drove by somebody on her side of the family. <laughs> That's it. And I'm talking about this one of them redneck confederate flag, <sighs> heat of the night watching as Dukes of Hazard, boss hog ass white men. In them days, Shit, you don't know. You know, you don't know who finna buy your car. People just show up at your house. They see the sign. He's my daddy. I remember this. I was four years old. We riding. He said, Billy, you like that car? I said, Yeah, daddy, that car pretty. You gonna buy it? He said, Yeah, man, I'm gonna go in here and see if this man and set it to me. And when he saw the Confederate flag, he looked up, he was like, shit. <laughs> he reached over, he fell on his side, he had his 38 snub. Walked up to the door, knocked on it. 
White man opened the door. <laughs> had his shirt off, but he had suspenders on. <laughs> you see, his white, he had white drawers, some BVDs. You know, niggas, we wear fruit alone. White men wear BVDs. He had a pot, a pot in his hand he was eating out of, and he had an oxygen tank he was pulling. <laughs> hey, boy, what the hell are you doing on my goddamn bribery? My daddy said, well, sir, if you don't mind, I, wanna, I saw the for sale sign on your car. He said, uh, all right. How much money you got? He said, well, sir, there's no price on them. I know. <laughs> How much money you got? He said, well, sir, I only got $300 on me right now, but I can get more from the bank. He said, all right. <laughs> hey, Margaret, I'm going outside to talk to this nigger. And he walks out the door, just like that. I'm still in the window, because you know, white, you know, black men getting called nigga back then. It was still something that might have happened in Chattanooga. So he was like, I was like oh shit, just call daddy nigga. I think he about to whoop his ass. <laughs> and he walked out the house, and my dad was like, when the nigga happened, he bought his fist up, and he was like, he looked at the car, he saw me, he looked back. Yeah. And he walked outside. He said, no, if you don't mind, boy. You know, I call all you people that call her. I don't call them niggers, but I love you. <laughs> yeah. uh, my nana is a black woman, and I love her to death. She died. The woman raised me, loved me better than my own ma did. Listen, I'm not got long left on this earth, but my son died. He's about your age, and I'm sure going to be out of here before the year's over. But I tell you what, Margaret or none of her other men folk finna drive my goddamn car. <laughs> so I tell you what, that's your boy in the car? He said, yes, sir. Hey, boy, you like that car? I'm like, yeah. He said, all right, give me the $300. On well, one promise to me, you make sure that boy gets that car, something happened to you. And that was it. Man went out to the car and signed my daddy the title to the 1967 200 SL. We had to get my uncle to come back over there because we thought it was a setup. <laughs> it's like, y'all didn't get us like that. We came back, got the car. Car was in the family. Little known story. So I grew up seeing this car. My daddy restored this car, put it back together. Dope. So me and Rich, when my dad died three years ago, he left me the 38 snub nose, left me the car. I went back through the car and I was like, man, shit, these Mercedes parts, they don't make them no more. Rich was like, nah, fuck that. Take all that shit out of there. Put a small block 350 V8 in that bitch. Ride down on these hoes. <laughs> I fixed that shit, bro. We gonna have that shit right. And I was like, already. <laughs> By the time this special come out, it's definitely gonna watch it. You're gonna see the car because it's gonna be all the way done. So it's been dope for me to do this with no sons, only my daughters, my daughter Blair, Amethyst, Kylie, and Indigo, and I'm getting the car ready for them. I don't got no boys, but my daughter Blair is here. Blair, what's up? You good? Hey, it's my girl right here. All right, so. I promise, the car going to you. You got to take care of it. Make All right? Promise. promise. Love you. Go home back over there. The girl right here. She going to get the car. No, ain't no niggas going to be driving my shit. <laughs> hey, I got this bad yellow bone. Got this bad Amethyst head. Yeah. Hell no. I will be Mr. Freddy Cougar nigga daddy. Get your bitch ass out of my car. <laughs> it's funny because, you know, shit, being a father is important. A lot of times it's discounted. They don't, uh, they don't like to say how important our fatherhood roles are. 
but it's fucking important. Even if you got a baby mama, you're not with the woman you had your kids with, fight to stay in your kid's life. I had two kids before I was married and two after I was married, and I bust my ass trying to be in my, in my daughter's lives as much as I can. I can't tell you it's always easy. It's hard, but shit, anything worth having is worth fighting for. I think about it because a lot of times they don't like to always mention in the media about how important black daddies are. Some people that wouldn't be here without a black daddy. You ain't gonna like some of this shit I'm about to say, but fuck it. Without a black daddy, wouldn't be no goddamn Beyonce. I'm gonna say it right now. Everybody always wanna show Tina knows on the goddamn internet. That's cool. Post Matthew too. Oh, nobody wanna post Matthew. Hey, nobody wanna fuck with Matthew. Matthew the nigga that you don't fuck with. Beyonce daddy. The guy who walked away from his corporate job because he believed in his daughter so much, he funded a record label to put out their first singles at Girl Time, then went on to start Music World, then went on to launch the rest of Destiny's Child and make Beyonce into the superstar she is. He rehearsed her, he practiced her, he got her with the best people. Never heard no story about Beyonce getting beat, molested, or no shit like that. She's now worth billions of dollars, and her and her husband, Jay-Z, have a profitable and successful family. She's performed all over the world, and is an icon. Nobody has done what she's done other than a guy named Michael Jackson. But nobody want to talk about Joe, though. <laughs> so what, Joe beat them kids? I beat my kids. Especially five little niggas from Gary outside of Chicago. Them niggas GDs. You know, he didn't know Michael Jackson was a GD. Them niggas all marching on steps. That was the whooping niggas. The Jackson brothers, you know them niggas can fight. Like I said, them niggas was doing this shit. <laughs> Michael Jackson, mm, 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 bah, knocking niggas out. <laughs> but, you know, shit, wouldn't be no Beyonce without that. And everybody want to say, you know, Tina made the uniforms, Tina did the hair, Tina was there to support, but Matthew did just as much, if not more, but he can't come around. All because, fuck one of Beyonce background dancers. Look, man, I done made you a superstar icon. At least I'm gonna get to fuck one of your background dancers. I think that's... I can't get some pussy, that's it? I... That's it? Now you don't post it no more? That's it? Without Matthew, Beyonce wouldn't have been shit but an AK. That's it. <laughs> she been a fine-ass majorette. Without Matthew, she would have not been who she was. And if Beyonce see this, in no disrespect. You know your daddy was down for you. Now, he got an outside kid. Imagine that. You Beyonce's brother, but you can't go over there to the house, though. <laughs> Jay-Z <laughs> is your brother-in-law. But you can't go your ass over there to the goddamn house, though. It's fucked up how it happens sometimes at back families. Don't matter how much money you got, dissensions and separation is still there. But we got to give credit what credit is fucking due. Shout out to you, Matthew Knowles. You all right. Seen Matthew, he's still out here trying to get well. He's he like, well, what's up, Billo? I say, man, Matthew, why you stepping like that, man? You know, I'm in Houston, he in his chicken shack talking to people. You on happy hour, this nigga still balling with a Bluetooth in his ear. I say, this nigga ain't stopping. Even Mrs. Bitches are here tonight. I was like, nigga, ain't you had enough of that? <laughs> you need to stop. <laughs> Shit, you got damn right. It's all right in here. <laughs> I don't have any daughters, man. I mean, any sons. So, I definitely wish I had one, but I love the girls that I have. Me and my wife talked about it. We talked about what we could do about it. And I'm like, I'm not finna go to five kids just trying to shoot it out. <laughs> just, ah, shit, another one. I'm not, I ain't finna do it. But I looked it up online. And online they have a thing called spinning. Spinning is where they take the sperm and the egg, mix it together, and they're able to alter the DNA helix and change and pick out the gender that is specified that you want. They're able to incubate multiple sets of uh, sperm and egg and make sure that you get what you want. And then they then through uh, in vitro and fertilization put that egg and sperm cell embryo back into the woman. She has it. Now they done altered athleticism, eye color, hair color even. Because all these traits is locked away in your DNA. Your DNA 
has the history of who you are. Go look on Ancestry. Go get your DNA done. See what the fuck you find out. Yeah, you know, it's a lot of you niggas out here talking about Africans. You African, motherfucker. All right, I'm telling you now. I seen your nose. I'm like, yeah, nigga, you African. Nigga. Steph, you got some African in you, nigga. <laughs> the people talk about it like, you know, when we talk about being black, white, we all still come from the same place, dog. We still got blood on the inside. We got a heart. We got feelings and shit. And nobody chose the way history was going to play out. Decisions was made, but nobody chose it. Some dumb shit was said, like, oh, slavery was a choice. No, the fuck it wasn't. You think God just had all the people before the world started, just had a white man, a black man, an Asian man, and a Mexican man, and an Indian man sitting around, and the black man and the white man got to pick first, and he's like, what you want? You gonna have some good things, you gonna have some bad things, what you want? Why God go first? Hell, well, uh, I want to be able to organize the military and uh, be a good war fighter. And uh, shit, I also want to have a, a successful set of things. He was like, okay, that's cool. But you're going to have probably the most annoying counterpart. Don't white women going to get on your ass. They was like, fuck it. You think that's how it went? You think niggas just went up there and was like, you know what? We're going to be athletic. We're going to be smart. We're going to be entertainers. We're going to have the best dicks in the whole world. All right, but you're going to be oppressed for thousands of years. And you know, like, niggas was like, hold on, wait a minute. All right, dog, so what we going to do? They say we're going to have the biggest dicks, nigga. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, how long is a thousand years, really, anyway? Slavery only lasts a while, but this dick is forever. Run that shit, Jesus. God, go ahead. Play that shit. I'm with it. Run that shit. You think that's how the fuck it was? You think we chose this shit? I definitely would have chose a dick. I'm choosing dick first, though. You might whoop my ass, but if I pull these pants down, nigga, you gonna cry in the car. <laughs> hey, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> that's how white boys sound when they see a black dude. Hey, what the fuck, man? That's a tail. No, it's a dick. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy, dog, because I be on TV and shit, and I go to my shows, and people come to my shows, the white dudes, they show up. They be so cool. Got their little Jordans on, they look cool, tight jeans on, little cool t-shirt shirt. They got the white woman with them, they be titties be pressed up in their neck. <laughs> you know them white women be pumping them titties up, they be up here, they be titties up here. She's like, hi, oh my God. Bitch done kiss me all the time. I'm like, hold on, bitch, you can't kiss me. My wife see this shit, she gonna kill y'all. No, I'm just saying, you're so fucking funny and smart. I didn't, fuck God, what the fuck is your hair? Can I touch it? <laughs> Let me touch it. Let me touch it. Now I'm looking at the dude because I'm like, hey, man, your girl. He's like, hey, man, no, it's cool, man. Yeah, well, it's cool. It's cool. Now, Billy, man, let me tell you something. I'm watching you on the internet, man, and uh, I got a couple propositions for you, man. I, I got a couple software tech, uh, tech startup companies. Let me say that line again. <clears throat> hey, Billy, man, let me tell you something, man. I got a couple software tech companies out here, some startups in Silicon Valley. And I want to get you out there, man. I think you can help me market my product, and I definitely pay you for it. Let's have some drinks. Come on, Billy, let's have some drinks. All right, titty in the neck, bitch. All right, let's go. We go out. We about five, six drinks in. It about appetizers and food and shit. Yeah, man, you having a good time? Like, hell yeah. Yeah, come on, man, we got a condo, man. We're gonna go up there, smoke some weed. You smoke weed, right? I got a weed business, too. Like, man, you a weed business? Yeah, I do, man. I do. I do. Come on, man. Come on. We go back to the condo. Let me show you, man, because I also have a real estate company. I was like, yeah, I actually own the building that's in there. I got condos open right now. You could get one. Let's talk. Let's go see it. Get up there and shit, looking out over the world and shit. You're like, damn, this is nice. <laughs> All this is yours, Mr. White Man. <laughs> yeah, man, everything's cool. You know, smoke some weed, man. Here, hey, try it. Now, this is grown with 70% THC. Yeah, shit. Look over the little white woman right there. Try it. Smoke it. <laughs> want some coke? Come on. Everybody wants some coke. Hey, listen, bitch. Okay, give me a little bit. Let me get out of here. <laughs> what you talking about, man? What's up? What's up, nigga? What's up? Hey, I like the shit you said already. Already. All right. Look, man, I want to get your condo, a big contract. Uh, just got one question for you. How would you like to fuck my wife? 
Whoa, what? Oh man, it's cool. We're open. We're fluid. No, it's no gay stuff, man. I'm just gonna sit back. Hey, she wants to do it. Look at her. She's hot. Look at that. Look at that rack. Look at that fucking rack. I look over. This bitch titties is already up my way. <laughs> touch them. Come on, Billy. Touch them. Those are twenty thousand dollar boobs. Like, hey man, look. I'm gonna get out of here. I don't know what type of shit y'all on. I know what type of person you take me for. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I'm speaking for shit. I'm trying to stand up for my goddamn people. I ain't no goddamn sellout. I'm getting the fuck out of here. But before I do, put the fuck shit out this bitch. Turn your head, nigga. <laughs> You're going to learn about supporting black issues in the community, bitch. <laughs> That's for that nigga in the back. Man, then the nigga say, fuck the nigga, bitch. Man, it's shit crazy. <laughs> Man, that nigga do cocaine. Who you on the phone with? Nigga, this, I'm Mike Irvin, homeboy. Mike, you gotta meet this nigga. <laughs> Michael Irvin gonna call me up to see the special. Nigga, you made me famous. Nigga, I got so much pussy off that shit. You know how many niggas' wives I done fucked? How many white men's wives I done fucked? Yeah, I done dropped dick in them. <laughs> Already! <laughs> The black women at home. Now, see, but that's what I'm saying. Now, he on that Hollywood shit. I ain't really. <sighs> but I guess. <laughs> so that's what women say when they like you. They still be. They go with your bullshit. They don't want to go. That's how you know a girl really be down to ride with you, fellas. Don't matter when you hear that. I guess. <laughs> this girl grew up preacher's daughter. Already. Yeah, already. She preaches daughter, straight A student. You done took her ass over there in Oak Cliff. Now she got three keys of cocaine, some X pills. You got her rolling up backwards. And you like, go in there and sell that shit to your cousin. She like, I guess. <laughs> it happens, nigga. It happens. I married my wife for one reason and one reason only. She let me pull my dick out through the dick hole in my drawers and still sucked it. I was drunk one night. I pulled my dick out through the dick hole. I said, look at that other dick right there. Go and suck that thing. She was like, I'm not like that. Who the fuck you think I am? I was like, girl, go ahead. I guess. <laughs> I love it. And if you're a real nigga in here, you didn't try this one right here. Your girl always hanging out with her home girl. She always backing her ass up on her and shit. Y'all done got fooled one night. You like, go in there and go leave the door open while we fuck see if she come in here. I ain't gay. I ain't with that shit. Man, hold the door open so she can see what be happening. You don't like when I do it to you from the back? I guess. <laughs> Look at all that right there. Look at the niggas in here that be having threesomes with that girl. They like, that nigga talking to real shit. <laughs> That nigga doing powder, having X pills, he fucking, he got guns and shit, he a family nigga, I'm fucking with the nigga. <laughs> this ain't for you, this for the niggas on the internet. All the women that don't like this getting this, like, see, that's why I shouldn't have came out here. This nigga's going too far with that shit, he too far. But it better not be no hoes in the goddamn hole. <laughs> I'm leave y'all this and I'm getting out of here. If I could have one, like I said, through that spinning shit, twenty thousand dollars, I'd do it. I'd try. Just my luck, my son end up being six foot, muscular, eighteen, and gay as hell. <laughs> <laughs> this nigga dying again. <laughs> Get him on camera. I don't know what he is. Like. He is right with me. He is dying. <laughs> that nigga coming, man. And I ain't homophobic. I would love him the same way my daddy, granddaddy, and great granddaddy raised me with tough love. I can see myself. You talking about that? Da, 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 da. <laughs> Talk about no, you just what my son gonna be, bad man. <laughs> You fucking me up. I wasn't even ready for that. 
Now I feel like I gotta do the joke with that in it some kind of way. All right, all right, all right. I'm gonna put it in there somewhere. Y'all just be ready for it. Because this ain't part of the joke. But I'm gonna try and see if I can get that in there, all right? All right, I got, all right y'all better give me a laugh if I do it. If I can pull it off, y'all better go with it. All right, I'm trying. <laughs> Fuck, all right, well, somebody tell me where I was standing at, man. Fuck, I'm high. I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out where I was standing at. Okay. <laughs> I can see myself coming in. I still love my son. I wouldn't trip. I raise him with tough love. I can see myself walking into the house after a long day work, and I walk in. What the hell is this in the goddamn floor? Hey, man. Hey. Hey, Junior, get these goddamn heels out the middle of the goddamn floor. You got your goddamn stilettos in the goddamn floor. Pick these heels up and put them up there on that goddamn shelf. You got your goddamn sundresses all over the goddamn place. Because let me tell you something. You can be a boy, you can be a girl, but you ain't going to be messy in my goddamn house. Get this shit up here. And man, what the hell is going on with you? I went down there to the boutique where you put your application in last week. The lady said you ain't been your ass back there to do nothing. You out here just being lazy as hell. I go to the barbershop. They tell me, you run around here. You got the little loose mouth. You out here sucking all these drug dealers off in the car. Let me tell you something. Your sister ain't no hoe and your mama ain't no hoe. I'm not gonna have no loose mouth ass son around here. You gonna find you one queen and you gonna settle your ass down. Now what happened to the boy from the church that sung the solos? You know the boy that's singing the solos up there at the potter's house? What happened to him? The, the choir director, nigga. What happened to him? Settle your ass down. Cause you can be a girl, you can be a boy, but you ain't gonna be a hoe in my goddamn house. <laughs> Talking about you wanna transition. You wanna change your body. Now, I'll let you transition, all right, but them grades ain't shit. About that report card here with all them L's. Let me tell you something. You better bring on some A's if you wanna get some D's, nigga. You understand me? <laughs> you better give me all A's to get double D's. Cause you can be a boy, you can be a girl, but you ain't gonna be stupid in my goddamn house. All in the house talking about da -da 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 -da. I'm Billy Sorrells, y'all. That's my time, man. Thank y'all. Thank you. Pop, daddy, granddaddy. This was for you, man. I love y'all.